Coming off of the first video in the how to fix the insert team here series about the now 5-20 New York Knicks, it might seem a bit strange that the second team I chose to cover was the currently 10-14 Detroit Pistons, who are solidly in the playoff hunt in the East. But the issue with this team isn't what they look like right now. They have a solid front court and okay supporting cast that could probably get them the eighth seed for the next two years or so. But when you really look at it, they also have, in my opinion, the worst long-term outlook of any team in the East. For reasons that I'll get into in this video, the Pistons simply don't have much of a future in terms of being a true threat in the Eastern Conference with their current roster construction, and that needs to change. So here's how to fix the Detroit Pistons. Step one, retain coach Dwayne Casey. So just based off the intro to this video, I'm sure many of you can tell that we're going to be going for a pretty significant rebuild for the Pistons here, which might also make you think that the team should start over with a new head coach as well. But I don't think that's necessarily the best thing for this team. Despite some failures in Toronto, I think Dwayne Casey is a good NBA coach, and quite frankly, he's better than anyone else this team would be able to bring in to replace him. He should do a solid job of developing players, and as long as he's on board with the rebuild, I'd keep him around. Step two, identify core pieces. So just like we talked about in the Knicks video, it's incredibly important when evaluating a franchise to determine which players are core pieces of your team. AKA guys you want to have around when the team is actually good again, and this is where things start to get scary for the Pistons. Essentially, there are only two players that come to mind here, Andre Drummond and Luke Kennard. Let's start with Kennard. With the exception of their most recent draft, he is the only Pistons first round pick from the prior five drafts, going all the way back to the 2012 draft when they selected Drummond, that is still on the roster. And this is the fault of both the front offices and coaching staffs over the past few years in Detroit. Henry Ellenson and KCP have moved on and they didn't even have a first round pick in 2014 and 2018, while this year's pick is still a wait and see situation, having only played in four games as of the recording of this video. But back to Kennard. Through his first two seasons in Detroit, he was essentially just a shooting specialist which was disappointing not only for a player selected 12th overall, but also ahead of guys like Donovan Mitchell, Bam Adebayo, and John Collins. Kennard was a bit of a late riser coming out of Duke, and the signs were there that he could still grow as a playmaker and be a really good two guard in the NBA, rather than just a guy that stands on the perimeter and shoots threes. And this season, we finally started to see that potential come through. Kennard is posting career highs in essentially every category except for three-point percentage, which is slightly down with increased volume. He's getting more minutes, more shots, has more offensive responsibility than ever before, and is showing more parts of his game that we've only seen flashes of in the past. The most encouraging sign is his playmaking at up over four assists a game, while also being efficient in that area with a relatively small turnover number. And as a result, he's established himself as the most promising young player and or asset for this team moving forward outside of Andre Drummond, depending on your opinion of him. At just 23 years old and under contract for another whole season after this one, Kennard, assuming he maintains and improves upon this level of production, is a rarity on this Pistons roster, a legitimate building block for the future. On the other hand, Drummond is a much more controversial case as a future building block. His production is undeniable and he's still just 26 years old, but he'll likely be a free agent this offseason, assuming he turns down his player option and he might not fit the timeline of this new era of Pistons basketball that's about to begin in this hypothetical situation. With a team that is so devoid of young assets, it might make more sense to move on from Drummond while he's still under contract and get some value in return for him to completely hit rock bottom before the team starts building things back up again. And honestly, that's about it in terms of core pieces for this team. There are some other pieces that I would like to retain, namely Thon Maker, Christian Wood, Svi, Bruce Brown, Kyrie Thomas, and their most recent first round pick, but that's mostly because the rest of the roster is so devoid of the kind of core pieces that I would like to have moving forward, which means that this team really can't afford to let any chance of these guys turning into good players down the road go to waste. They're gonna have the cap space moving forward regardless, so bringing back these guys on cheap deals and giving them a ton of opportunities to develop for their own use or as trade pieces down the road 
would make sense to me. But to be clear, the only guy I would make off limits to a trade on this Pistons team, unless a star is available way down the road, is Luke Kennard. Step three, trade everybody else. Yes, I mean everybody. Oh, hey Portland, you need some front court scoring and star power? Here, take Blake Griffin. We'll just need some salary relief and a young piece or two. Oh, what's that Dallas? You want a rim running and rebounding big? Here, take a chance on potential free agent to be Andre Drummond. We'll just take a young asset or two and be on our way. Are there any teams in need of offseason salary relief? We have a nice Reggie Jackson expiring contract that can be all yours for just a first round pick. And the list of tradable players just keeps on going. Tony Snow and Langston Galloway as defenders and off-ball shooters with Galloway being an expiring contract. Derrick Rose as a veteran scorer on a cheap deal for this season as well as next, similar to what Lou Williams has been for the Clippers. Thon Maker as front court depth if the team wanted to let him go, and the same for Markeith Morris. This is a team that has half a roster of players that could be useful in a trade to the right team, and they'd be idiots not to try and trade every single one of them. This roster screams six seed in the East as their ceiling, even with a fully healthy and all-NBA caliber Blake Griffin. I understand that there are financial incentives to having a solid but not championship contending team, but the only real option from a basketball perspective here is to completely overhaul this roster while hanging on to Kennard. And heck, if they really wanted to, they could try and trade him too if they wanted, considering that he's going to need a new contract in a year and a half, and this team likely won't be close to where they want to be by then. But the goal here of getting rid of all these guys is to set this team up for future success that exceeds just being an easy first round out in the Eastern Conference playoffs. The return for their bigger names might not be as much as their fans would hope, considering Griffin's injury issues and Drummond's status as an impending free agent, but getting any assets in return at this point is a positive and their value isn't likely to go up from here. So it might be a bit of a bitter pill to swallow for this franchise to completely reboot like this, but it's pretty clear that's exactly what they need to do. Get some young players, some extra draft picks, give them the space to develop, start the tank, and see what kind of team this front office can put together. Step four, use 2020 free agency to get more trade pieces. This might seem a bit confusing at first, but I think this is actually a strategy that teams should start exploring. Remember when the Suns signed Trevor Ariza to a big one-year contract in the summer of 2018, still sucked as a team and flipped his expiring to the Wizards and got back Kelly Oubre, who's now a key piece of their team? Or this past offseason when the Knicks brought in Marcus Morris on a big one-year deal and now will likely trade him for some kind of piece this season if they have any kind of basketball intelligence at all, why don't more teams do this? Sign a solid veteran player to a big money but short deal, then flip them to a contender at the deadline. I mean, sure, you have to wait until December 15th to trade them, and they might help you win a few more games and interrupt the tanking strategy a little bit, but you get back a piece that you actually want that you couldn't have gotten otherwise. Now, there are issues with this, namely, if you want to keep trading away veterans after signing them in the offseason, eventually they won't want to sign with you anymore. But still, the Pistons would be smart to at least explore this as an option, especially in what looks like a pretty dry free agency class in terms of stars. Step 5. Draft the best players available. In my opinion, teams that are in a tanking situation too often get bogged down in fit trying to figure out how exactly all these players are going to come together when your team is actually good. But you never quite actually know what kind of role these players are going to be put in once they develop all of their skills. So in my opinion, the best thing to do is just get the best asset that you can and worry about the fit once you actually start to be good. These players can always be traded down the road. Some of them might not work out. So you might as well just go with the player that you think is going to be the best down the road and then just deal with the fit when you have to. Personally, I'd rather have the best asset regardless of how all the pieces fit together. And I think that's definitely a situation that the Pistons should put themselves in. And you might think that this plan is a bit simple, just trade everyone and bottom out, but that's the best plan for this team in my opinion. They already tried the trade for guys and hope for the best model with Reggie Jackson years ago and then the Blake Griffin deal. And for some other teams later on in this series, that strategy is gonna make more sense. But for me, this is how I would fix the Detroit Pistons. And there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video, and I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.